Hey guys, Gabby here. So right now I'm editing this vlog that you're about to watch. If you've been following me on social media, you know this episode is going to be a Q&A based episode answering all your questions about me and the channel. And you know, I thought it was really important for this first ever Q&A that I did. It was really important that I answered all of the questions that you guys submitted. You know, I don't have a huge audience as of right now. So as my way of saying thank you, I wanted to make sure that everyone's question that was submitted was answered on this Q&A. Now, having said that, I didn't realize how long this video would end up taking. There's about at least a half hour's worth plus of footage that I have to edit. So instead of making you sit through 20 minutes of question, I'm going to break this Q&A up into two vlogs. Part one will be the one you are watching today and next week's vlog will be the rest of your questions answered in a part two episode so hope you enjoy this episode and yeah let's get to answering those questions hey guys it's gabby here coming to you from late saturday night in my office getting some work done you may have seen this on social media already but in case you haven't, I'm taking a vacation this upcoming week. By the time you see this vlog, I'll be on my way back from vacation. The entire week, I'm gonna be in Mexico with some family, and I'm not really gonna have access to any of my editing software, so I had to get a little bit creative. And I asked you guys uh, to submit questions to me for a question and answer session that I will be doing for this episode of musician's life and at the same time I'm going to be working on some things that I also need to take care of before I go on said vacation because I need to get them done on time and I need to finish everything before I leave because by the time I return I'm gonna have to hit the ground running with basically where I left off and preparing for a big weekend with four play clarinet and I need to have some of that stuff prepared before I leave for the trip so I'm going to be showing you what I'm up to as well as answering some of those questions you've submitted to me on both Facebook and Instagram. Also, shout out to everyone who submitted a question. Thank you so much. You guys really asked some great questions and I can't wait to share them in this Q&A today. So let's get started. Now, before I start answering questions, let me show you what I'm going to be working on right now. You may have seen again on social media before, but I'm working on a drum track for a clarinet choir piece that I wrote. And right now I'm just adjusting the volume levels on that. That's the last thing I need to do before I finish this drum track. So that's what I'm going to be doing while I answer this first set of questions. So let's get started. If I don't directly watch the camera it's just because i'm focusing on adjusting a little thing here or there um but i don't worry i'm still paying attention to the answer of the questions all right let's get started here i've written down all my questions here and now i'm gonna answer let me just check this one little volume setup i fixed first by the way do you guys like my little bear hat oh, yeah that one's okay all right, first question is, what is your instrument brand, mouthpiece, reed size, reed brand, etc.? So this question is basically just asking about my clarinet setup, which I get asked a lot, but I've never really answered it before. So I will just kind of get this first one out of the way just for all my clarinet peeps who are curious about what I play on. I play on Buffet R13 clarinets. My barrel is actually different than the stock barrel that came with my clarinet. I do still have it, but it got a little cracked, so I got a new one. I play on a Menig barrel. And as for my mouthpiece, I play on a Van Doren M13 Lyre 13 series. Uh, reeds, I play on Van Doren as well, the traditional blue box reeds, and strength three and a half. So that's my setup. Check this little volume thing here. Okay, next question is, what is your favorite age to teach and the why? I've never been asked this question before, but I feel like in my teaching experience, I really enjoy teaching the high school age and older the most. And that's generally just because I feel like that age group 
is a little more invested in the clarinet, you know, they're not necessarily doing it because their parents are forcing them to, they actually have like somewhat of an interest in playing the instrument. That's not to say I don't run into high schoolers who experience that or, you know, they're doing it just because their mom and dad made them, but I feel like they're doing it more because they want to. And with younger kids, you know, they're just, most of them are just starting on the instrument for the first time. It's very, very beginner stuff. They don't really have this concept of practicing, which is totally okay. I have nothing against that, but I'm generally more interested in teaching students that are interested in clarinet. I mean, that's why I want to teach you. And you know, honestly, for me, it's less about the age and more just of the interest. How much interest do you have in learning the instrument? And the more you have, I'm all for that. And you know, interest doesn't necessarily need to mean, oh, I want to become a professional clarinetist. You have an interest in learning. You want to have an interest in becoming better and learning more about music and the clarinet. And if that's what you're all about, then I'm the right teacher for you. Next questions. Did you ever want to quit clarinet? And if you did, what brought you back? This is a great question. And you know, as much as I love music, there's been many times in my career where I've highly considered quitting, quitting all my endeavors, quitting the clarinet, quitting music altogether. You know, it's music is a very hard profession. You yourself have to want it so much that it means more to you than anything else. Because let me tell you, it's not a career for the faint of heart. Music, it, it takes a lot of self-discipline, mental strength, sometimes physical, depending on the instrument you're playing. And for me, I was put down a lot, you know, I wasn't always as confident as I am now. You know, I even still have to work on my confidence today. And, ooh, gotta fix that thing. And even today, you know, I'm still working on my confidence and the ability to believe myself a little more, but I've come a long way and I feel very confidently, much more at least, that about what I do than I used to. But back then it wasn't always the case. You know, even my undergrad, I had people who were my, who I saw as my friends and colleagues telling me I should quit the clarinet because they didn't think I was dedicated enough, they didn't think I could do it, they didn't think I was good enough, and it really hurt me and it got me down and, you know, thankfully I got past that situation. But even aside from that experience, sometimes you wonder, it's like, am I meant to do this? Do I have what it takes to make my own career in music? And this is especially the case when I started doing more stuff that wasn't necessarily the traditional musician route. So what brought me out of that bad place? At the point when I was considering quitting the most in clarinet, I stopped listening to all classical music, period. I just focused on listening to a lot of music that I loved and that kind of recultivated the love that I had for music and just kind of the desire to want to make music in the first place. But ultimately it just came down to the fact that it helped me remember how much I loved playing music too. And you know, I just kind of decided I'm not gonna let anybody else or these irrational fears intimidate me from quitting. And you know, even as stressful as this career is, even when in my darkest times, I never really believed that I would actually fail. I always told myself, you know, you know, you're going through a hard time right now, but you're you're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. You're gonna come out on the other side as a successful musician. You know, always having that at the back of my mind, I think, never forced me to be in a position that never allowed me to really quit. And keeping all these things in mind, that it just reminded me how much I love music, how much, you know, I really felt like myself when I was pursuing music, when I was performing music. It's just the most me thing that I could possibly do, if that makes sense. So that all those things kind of ultimately kept me from quitting you know, and helped me remember, you know, that I love to do this for myself as much as I love to give it back to others. Okay, next question. Have you or would you ever consider doing video production for others outside of music? Um, yeah. I guess I know well, I never have really before um, probably just because right now my skill level with video production is still light years behind of what I could be working up my skill my video production skills you know editing filming and all that is something I definitely want to improve at some point if I reach a high enough level I feel like then I would be comfortable doing it just because you know when I'm doing it you know for myself it's like you know I can handle you know making mistakes you know I'm not really judging myself in the process just because I'm just having fun doing it 
but when I do video production for others, you know, I have to make sure the quality level is consistent. That's not to say that none of my productions here have been bad or inconsistent, but when the, I give to someone else, there's a lot more at stake. You have to complete a vision for someone else, not yourself. So yes, I would definitely consider that, but you know, let, let me work on my video production skill a little more first. Next question is, how did you learn how to edit? So my basic uh, editing skills I got from some YouTube tutorials, honestly. Um, there's the one, the big one was, there was one by David A. Cox, and, and I'll link all these tutorials below if you want to like check these out or anything. For Final Cut Pro, I watched this really long one by David A. Cox. It kind of gave me just a little bit of, you know, basic things that I should know about how to use Final Cut Pro. Also, kind of a sort of random one, but when, if you knew her, it would make sense. Uh, th this beauty lifestyle blogger that I follow, her name is Maya goes by the name of Shameless Maya on YouTube. In addition to her like beauty stuff, she also does a segment called Tech Talk. And there she gives a lot of really helpful tutorials about editing and you know, different kinds of things you should get for like microphones and just, you know, if you're first, if you're trying to be like a that YouTube type of person, I followed her stuff a lot when I was first starting out. Just watching some of her, her tutorials helped. The rest I just kind of learned as I was doing it. You know, once I kind of learned the basic functions, you know, I could I play a thing, play around with things, and if I wanted a specific thing, at that point, once I knew the basic skills, it was easier for me to just figure out while I was doing the darn things. So that. Yeah. How do you prepare for your vlogs? So the preparation is not like a super lot, but you know, I t definitely take a good chunk out of my day. Usually I try to do it like a few days before and also the day before just to kind of finalize things. First I plan my vlogs on a day where I'm either gonna be doing something interesting, like maybe something with the quartet or working on a really cool project or I'm traveling to meet somewhere in downtown LA or something like that. You know, like I did with Drew, that be all hit. Mm -hmm. Or I do it on a day that I know is gonna be really stress-free just because I'm gonna have to be spending a lot of time focusing on shots and whatnot. And so I try to plan it on a day where I'm not gonna be interrupted by anything. I try not to do it on days that I teach just because I can't really film inside. Anyways, unless it's about t my experience teaching, which I have done that before. So I'll put it in a card, link it above and below, all that good stuff. So you can watch that one. Then once I've decided the day, and again, if I've picked something that's gonna be on a day that I'm doing something really interesting, I'll basically have the focus be about kind of what I'm doing for the day. I pick like a focus or a topic that I'm going to talk about, or maybe it's based off of something I'm doing that day. Um, and then I kind of make a small outline of things I wanna talk about, things I want to highlight. If there's something specifically I want to show you guys in the vlog, I write that down, like certain shots I want to get, certain angles I want to get. And that's basically kind of how I plan my vlogs. Nothing too complicated because I also kind of want to be in the moment when I'm vlogging and going about my day. I don't want to make it too scripted or anything. I mean, I don't really script them anyway, but you know, I can, you know, organize some things beforehand. So that's how I plan things for the most part. I think this one's gonna fix the problem that I was having here. All right, next question. What's something you're way more comfortable doing now than compared to where you when you first started? This I really like this question a lot. I like all these like the really reflective ones. Definitely the biggest thing that I've gotten more comfortable with is just how I set up my equipment. Um, knowing where to adjust the tripod, how to slap on, you know, the microphones, all the gear, handling gear in general is just been the one thing that I've noticed has just really improved over time. Just because when I first started out, you know, it would take me forever to like get adjust like the tripod or just the camera the way I wanted to, you know, fixing a lens on, knowing where to point the camera also. If it's something where I'm going to be moving around a lot and I can't always focus on what's happening on the screen right there. Just having that awareness of knowing what the phone and the lens is gonna capture where I'm, st based off where I'm standing, that's something that I've improved, just awareness of that. Also I've improved obviously a lot in my editing skills, just timing things. I think actually though one of the 
things that one of the few skills that I've always had even from the beginning is that anytime I had to time things with music I felt like I was do oh I just did a pretty good job with that and also just talking on the camera I'm much more comfortable than when I first started I used to be like um uh, 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 a lot you know a lot of pausing a lot of saying you know um like this you know just random things that just kind of interrupt the flow of talk. That's not to say I don't still do that now, but it's far less often. And you know, obviously with planning things ahead of time, I have an idea more of what I'm gonna talk about and you know, less pausing, more flow, and that's all good. All right, I think I'm done with the drum track finally. You guys want a sneak peek of what it sounds like? Okay, I'm only gonna show you a little bit of what it sounds like and just the drum track just because I want the arrangement to be a surprise. I'm definitely going to showcase what it sounds like when the clarinet choir actually plays it. So, you know, we call cool, I'll be all accomplished and stuff. So here, give it a listen. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so that was your part one of this week's Q&A. Like I mentioned earlier in the little intro, um, part two will be next week's episode and you'll get to find out the next project that I'm working on, how I arrange, how I want this channel to progress, and other introspective things about me and my musical process and this channel. So. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I will catch you on the flip side and see you next week with more questions answered. Bye.